Okay, we are now live. So we're working through <clears throat> some little technical challenge opportunity, right, Nick? Not a, That's not right. A, not opportunity. So we're getting Jared on here. So we'll give it uh, like we normally do. We'll give it a couple minutes and we'll give people some time to to get logged on here and start watching. So if you are watching, uh, please let us know where you're watching from. And if you could, if you could share this um, on, on your social media page, on your Facebook page, I'm getting ready to do it right now. Sound Glow Feeds is live. So if you can, make sure you share that. Put it, put in there where you're watching. If you're watching from someplace uh, tropical and a little nicer than Central Indiana today, that would be nice to know too. Absolutely. Cosmo. Nathan, I really do think you should tell them about your drip coffee like you were giving me the details on earlier. <sighs> no, I'm not going to do that. I can't help that I like a nice pour over coffee. That's right. Cannot help it. So Jared's trying to get on here. Hello to everybody at the Helsinger Ranch. Hi, Helsinger Port Herefords. As you're jumping on here, as we've done in the past, tell us where you're, you're viewing from. I think that's pretty cool to see kind of the broad reach that we can have on these Facebook lives. Pretty neat to join up with this. Yeah, so the last couple, we, we can we can kind of see where people are watching from. Um, so at least after we go back and see the analytics, we can see at least the top states. So the Midwest has been pretty strong, Nick. So hopefully your, uh, your Southwest Western crew shows up and wants to learn about some cattle supplements tonight. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll get them to show up. Hi, Pete. Hi, Jennifer, watching in Maryland. It would be interesting to know, honestly, how many um, how many people from different states are watching. I mean, I, I would say we've dang near hit about all of them. Hey, Randy, thanks for joining. Hey, Phil. West. Hi, Wes. Hi, Jenny. We are going to get very educational, if nothing else, Chris. That's that right. Better. That's what we're here to do. I think Jared's about to throw his phone into the uh, into the pond. So we'll wait a couple more minutes here. Again, thanks for joining. Um, we're approaching 100 live viewers, which is great. Hopefully that number continues to grow a little bit here. We, we know you have a lot of options when it comes to some Facebook Live stuff, so we appreciate you watching. Also know that, and I'll make this announcement a handful of times, but if you're not able to take notes or you want to go back and learn some more, um, don't, don't fret, don't worry. This will be recorded. You can go back and watch it, and then I will also post it to uh, the Sunglow Feeds YouTube channel for tomorrow uh, or by tomorrow so you'll be able to jump on there and kind of see all of our videos cataloged in one in one nice spot so i do see uh jared trying to get on here um he's having some audio issues so we will uh get started here shortly also as we're going through this and like we always stress when we're doing these facebook lives uh any question is a good question and it kind of uh, tailors how we're going to do these particular videos and uh, not only as we're going through the, the different sections but if you have something specific that maybe wasn't touched on uh, we can we have a little section at the end that we can kind of dive in a bit further but as we go along just type in your questions and we'll be happy to answer those as best we possibly can and if if you've not joined us before we can um, we can pop up the questions up right up on the screen so 
you can, we can see that. So just wanted to show we've got that capability. So if you if you missed what the question was, you'll be able to see it right there on the screen. And again, all this will be um, recorded, and you can go back and watch it. I, I would really like to do that because I'm sure it's going to be something um, that, that you're going to pick up. Again. So I think it's dinner time. In the next hour. Yeah, if you guys can hear, there is a little boy that's crying and wants to go hang out. So I apologize. That is a day in the life of little kid dad. So I'm yeah. sure there's plenty of people that are watching that know what that's like. So, yeah. All right, Jared's trying here. As many of you watching know, sometimes rural internet is not, uh, not the best, so. Uh, bear with us, hang tight. It's going to be worth it. We got James in North Carolina, John in Oklahoma, Dylan, Iowa. It's great. Appreciate you guys jumping on here and watching. All right, Jared's trying again. We'll give him a couple more minutes, and we'll get we'll get started here. Maybe he can join us partially. Uh, part of the way through too. That'd be good. Yep. So the way that if, you, if you've not joined us before, um, the way that we normally do these is we'll kind of give a little rundown of the five supplements that we're going to discuss tonight. So we're going to talk about to the fullest, full body, full tank, man up, and show cattle explosion. Um, we might actually shift the the full body one to to later on in the night so hopefully if jared's able to get on here um i know i know that's a product that that he really believes in and would, would have a lot of insight on so uh we'll go ahead and get started um we'll, we'll start with to the fullest and to the fullest is a product um that is that is pretty unique to the marketplace it's it's a bagged halage product uh, that's really versatile it also contains cob and I know that's really what separates it um, from other bagged haylage products that are out there. So Nick, kind of walk through with us what, what makes a great candidate for To The Fullest and where have you seen it work really well? Absolutely. So uh, I think the biggest thing to stress with To The Fullest is any calf that comes in the barn at some point in time will need that product. And if it's only on show day to get that optimal show day fill, uh, still they're going to need it at some point in time in their life. Uh, we've used it a multitude of different ways, and I know you said how versatile that particular product is, but uh, as a baby calf, as we're kind of getting those things ready to show, we'll kind of introduce that as almost kind of a reward for finishing their feet at times, or if they're having a good day and kind of chilling and relaxing, just throw a little bit of that in the bottom of a feed pan and throw it to them. Uh, as we kind of continue through their show careers, truthfully, we just kind of bump that up, and uh at certain times, uh, we like to use that uh, just in our daily ration, uh, especially as those things get to breads and kind of this time of the year as we're going into the summer. And you think about just uh, cattle in general, their rumen continues to grow and you kind of have the opportunity to add in just more product and volume of product into their guts. And so as you bump it along, uh, we get to feed them quite a bit of that, to be quite honest with you, especially as you get to be breads and then uh, we we'll use it in our daily rations as well as whenever we go to shows quite heavily uh, to get that added fill that everybody's trying to achieve uh, as they go into the show ring. Uh, that's a bit more on the heifer side, uh, but I think you can use it just as much in the steers uh, in the same application, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I think rib cage and rib shape has become pretty key when it comes to winning shows these days, and that's a uh, that I've never seen one turn their nose up to it. And so again, if you have one that maybe just isn't a great eater and you need to introduce something in there, uh, I think that's a great product to get cattle to eat as well. Um, it's just something that we use kind of as our fail safe. If something isn't working, that's kind of where we go to, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how much, how much are you talking in terms of quantity um, and I, I know it's different for everyone, right? But let's say yeah. you know, three different phases. You've got, you know, a younger calf that maybe you're getting ready to show. Then you've got one in the middle of its career. And then you've got one that's about to hit its end point. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, I actually told Nathan this, and so I knew he would call me out in this uh, kind of specifics how much kind of a, a question right when we get this thing kicked off. Uh, but mine is a little bit more of uh, the test of an eye or kind of cowboy uh, knowledge. It says as as you read the tag on that, I think it's two to five pounds and you can get quite a bit more of that into into a diet. Um, what we kind of do is big handfuls is kind of what our basic guide is. And I know that's uh, very loose in terms of uh, measurement, uh, but that's what we kind of go off of. And so as a baby calf, we'll go with one big handful uh, and then continue to bump them up. And uh, as we get to be in big breads, we'll go two to three, depending on how much that is. Uh, truthfully, as we kind of get to be in bigger breads, uh, we'll use that as as much as a third of our diet, just because it's something that they like to eat. Uh, it's something that helps with just drop in terms of their rib cage and added depth. Uh, keeps them happy uh, and full, and you're not going to get just a ton of return in terms of something turning into muscle or fat. And so it's something that keeps them happy, and keeps expansion of the gut, uh, but they're not going to get chubby on it, which is something that I think is key when it comes to feeding heifers. And same with steers. A lot of this, you're going to hear me probably talk first about heifers and then go to steers. Uh, we merchandise a few more heifers than we do steers, and so that's where my mind initially goes. And so, uh, please keep me honest on that as we go through this video. But steers is the same way; it's something that keeps them happy, uh, especially in those times where you're trying to hold on their muscle or maybe trying to keep them just a bit more honest in terms of their cover and condition. It's something that you can throw in there to keep those things uh, happy and content. Uh, I know a lot of times whenever we throw these things in the cooler. You're maybe trying to hold on them just a little bit this time of year before you make that hard push into your state fair. Uh, that's something that you can introduce in there. And, and we've even used it just kind of an added tidbit. Uh, as you go out there at midday and checking on them and making sure everything's good, we'll throw a feed pan uh, with a couple handfuls in there just to kind of keep everything going in the right direction. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, that's, that's a lot of great info. I, I would ask another question too to you. What, what do you think separates – because there are other options, right? I mean, sure. there's, no, there's no secret to it. So there are other options. So what, I guess, two parts, what makes our product different? And mm -hmm. secondly, how is this different than just feeding hay? Absolutely. So uh, the biggest thing on how it makes this product is different than other competitors. And we're not going to sit on here and bash on other feed companies. Uh, everybody makes a good product. And so use what you feel comfortable with. What I've found with To the Fullest over its competitors is I'm very confident that the quality of hay that's put into that haylage is as good as it gets. And I think that that is pretty important when you're considering uh, just how much of that eventually you're going to be putting into the ration on a daily basis. I think that's very, very important. And then as Nathan touched on, and it says it right in the name, uh, honestly, anymore, is the cob that's in there. I think that makes a huge difference. And uh, that's kind of become a, a buzzword item. And we found it quite a bit more in show cattle diets here within the last year or two. Uh, I think what that does specifically in this product is it slows down their digestion uh, and it allows for more expansion while that product is in their gut. So those things in conjunction, I think is what separates it uh, versus its competitors. And then what was your second part of that question, Nathan? The difference in feeding this versus just hay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, to be quite honest with you and what I tell all my families, and I got a few of them on here, John Alexander, uh, Dylan, there's Scooter sitting up there. Uh, we got uh, Philip there as well. I tell those guys, truthfully, just get a, a nice or honestly average grass hay is kind of what we want to be feeding on a regular basis when you just have it out there in the round bale feeder. And what we're using that for versus to the fullest is just scratch value and to keep their gut going. Uh, they're not getting just a ton out of that uh, as opposed to uh, a to the fullest is maybe packed with just a bit more of that punch that we see in show products. Uh, I think that's the biggest difference is your grass hay or, or whatever hay you choose. That's kind of what we have around here. And what I like to use uh, is pretty average in terms of what they get back out of it from a show standpoint outside of just fill. Uh, and I know that I've been hitting that hammer on the head as far as that's what to the fullest does as well, but it's a bit more targeted as far as where that fill hits them when you're talking about to the fullest. And I think that they probably uh, like it just a little bit better. And so it works a bit more uh, in your favor as far as uh, something that they enjoy eating in their daily ration, as opposed to just kind of your, your safety net. That is your hay bale. that sits out in your run at night. Yeah. Yeah. 
So an, an, another question, another thing to bring up too would be the amount or the lack of energy that's in to the fullest also. Sure. Yeah, uh, that would be another thing. And there is molasses in there, but I think something that uh, is worth discussing versus some of its competitors is uh, the, the amount that's in there. Uh, it's not quite as heavy in terms of its molasses. And so I've fed some uh, over the years. We're at a show. I forgot to pack to the fullest. That's completely my fault. Uh, my neighbor has some insert other uh, of a competitor's product. And I found that the molasses that's in there is quite a bit heavier. And I don't think that they probably like to consume just as much of that other uh, particular ground hay product. And that's something that I think is pretty key when you're talking about to the fullest. Uh, it's almost like eating a salad, uh, but you like eating it. If that makes sense, uh, it sits there and it's a bit more light in terms of their gut. And so they eat more and more of it. And that's kind of what we're going for there, especially on show day, but also uh, when you're at the house. And uh, some of these things we're going to talk a bit time sensitive. And so as we're looking at uh, it increasing in terms of temperature this time of year, uh, it's going to get hotter and cattle are going to truthfully not want to eat as much. And so that's something that I think is certainly uh, deserves being discussed is just it sits a bit lighter in the room and, and they're still going to want to eat afterwards. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to try to see if we can get Jared. We're going to test this real quick, see if he's able to. I know the video is not great, but I don't. Jared, can you hear us or? While you're working on that, Nathan, I'm going to answer some of these questions. Uh, Chris, one of our fellow Sunglo teammates, asked on show day, how much to the fullest can you feed? And I have not hit a max yet. Uh, you might see a little bit of a looseness in stool if you absolutely top it out. But outside of that, as much as they like to eat, I think that you can feed them that. It's a pretty safe product, and so you're not going to see any adverse effects, in my opinion. A great question. Okay, so let's jump um, now to full tank. Yeah. So full tank, um, full tank is a citrus pulp pellet um, that that is more palatable than than just beet pulp alone, and it's it's a multi species product. Uh, if you've watched some of these other videos that we've put out, um, you know it's been more uh, pig focused. And we talked a lot about full tank. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of similarities in what full tank is able to do. On the pig side is as where guys are using on the cattle side not just in heifers but in steers too so uh nick again kind of walk through with us where where full tank works really well um what makes a good candidate for it how much are you feeding to for sure yeah uh i think this is a fun product to talk about and uh, i actually am a bit of a history nerd and especially in the livestock uh, sector and so i think what's cool about this product and maybe no one else cares about this uh, but this is actually the very first of its kind product that ever came to the market in terms of a, a beet pulp pellet. And I think that's something uh, that certainly deserves to be discussed in this particular light just because it's still relevant and it's something that people still strive and want to use. And I think that certainly speaks for its effectiveness in a feeding strategy. Uh, another thing that I think is pretty neat about a full tank is just how it's constructed. It's a bit more of a citrus. Uh, pulp versus uh, a beet pulp. And so the way that that works in cattle versus some other ones is uh, you're not going to get quite as much sugar out of it. And I'm not, not going to get too in detail uh, with that because truthfully, I can't. I'm not the most scientific. And Chris, if he wants to chime in, certainly can dive in on that. But the added sugar, uh, whenever we're talking about feeding cattle specifically, sits a bit more in their chest. Uh, and I think that that's something that uh, is neat with full tank is the lack of sugar that's in there because it's more citrus based uh, is not going to get you quite as much of that full chest uh, that we're trying to stay away from uh, as we're feeding these cattle. And so uh, full tank, again, beyond that, I think uh, something that certainly is interesting about it is for all intents and purposes, uh, it has no nutritional value. And I know that that's uh, kind of makes you raise your eyebrow, like why do I want to give you money for a bag of something that has no nutritional value? Uh, but that's the actual point of full tank is to get in there and uh, expand as much as naturally possible that that pellet does when it hits the moisture in their gut. Uh, and then they're not going to get nearly any uh, protein or fat uh, back out of that in terms of what it's doing to their muscle or what it's doing in terms of fat cover. And so it works wonderfully, especially in these heifers, or if you're holding on a calf to get that added fill in their gut, uh, but you're not going to get any addition to their muscle development or to fat cover 
uh, when you're trying to just kind of hang out and do a, a bare minimum in terms of ad addition to those two uh, areas. Yeah, th this is a product that, that has on our spec sheet only has 1% fat. I mean, like that's. Yeah, you don't find that very often. No, you don't find that hardly on, on, on anything. So I, I would say too, you know, talk about the differences in the way that you can use this for a heifer versus a steer maybe in different feeding situations. Yeah, for sure. Uh, as we're going through with these heifers, uh, I think that's something that you can introduce no matter where you at, you're at in the game. Uh, because with heifers, and as we kind of discuss some of these things, we talk about trends as we're looking in the, the cattle sector. And we all know that rib shape is something that's taken definitely a, a front seat whenever we're looking at these cattle here within the last few years, especially. Uh, and so regardless of what your heifer looks like, you can use full tank and you can have some added uh, rib shape and depth. Uh, I think something that this helps with quite a bit is if you have one that is deep bodied but needs more outward curvature to the rib shape, uh, this works absolutely incredible because it does sit there and it swells up and it swells outward in terms of their body shape. And so I think that's something that as we continue to work on their depth of body, sometimes we forget about outward curvature to the rib cage. Yep. And I think that's something that you're seeing kind of step back into the light uh, with these judges here in the cattle ring is when you step in behind them. For so long, we were looking just at a silhouette or a side profile. As you step in behind them or look at them from a three quarter shot, uh, I think that that's something that certainly this product helps with and gives them that uh, kind of right kind of rib shape that we're looking for. Uh, that's a bit more on the heifer side in the steers. I think it works perfectly in the, that exact same scenario and just a bit more in terms of outward curvature to the rib cage and turn to the upper portion of their rib shape. And as you're looking at those, obviously they need to have that easy feed and look, uh, but more than anything, when you step in behind them and if they have that right kind of back shape and if their pin width is right, it's a bit of a, a letdown if they don't have that body shape that kind of works into their back along with it. And so this is a product that works awesome in those uh, particular regards. And again, uh, as you're looking at how much to feed, I think it says on the bag two to five pounds is kind of where that kind of sits. Uh, in my opinion, on the heifers, you can get as much to about a third of your diet can get to full tank if you really need that. Uh, and steers, just kind of play with it and see what you need uh, is, is kind of my guidance on those uh, and talking to different steer customers that we have that really uh, rely on this in terms of body shape is kind of play with it a little bit, use it before you need it. Uh, and yeah. so that way you can see what that does in terms of just their body shape in general. Yeah. So one, one of the keys that Brandon talked about um, on the pig side was a key to full tank is early. And so it sounds pretty similar really in, on, on the steer side or even on the heifer side uh, that, that starting early, you get them used to it, if nothing else. It, mm -hmm. really important. So Absolutely. I think the sound here is very clear to hear us. Yes. You can see your pickup dash. And now your arm. And now you. Not hearing you though. <laughs> Does anybody else have a good question on these first two products as we're kind of waiting on uh, getting this figured out from a technical standpoint? Please uh, throw that into the comments below and be happy to answer that for you. As we're working through on uh, these different uh, products from a fill standpoint, I want to stress to a very high degree that they work well in conjunction with one another. And so don't feel like you have to pick one uh, to use in your particular feeding strategy. Uh, we get to the point where we're using all three at the same time. And I think the more that you can kind of feed these off of each other, the better that they work because they all work just a little bit differently. I think, I think that's really important to, to call out because, you know, sometimes we just have to experiment a little bit, right? I mean, Absolutely. like th th this is not, we can try to make this as much of a science as we want, but you know, there's a lot of science experiments out there and, you know, ultimately, experimenting and figuring out what works best for your animal. I mean, 
they're all different, right? I mean, genetically, they, they're all going to deposit fat different. They're all going to have different terms of their rib. They're all going to, you know, have more body differently and yeah. deposit more differently. So you might as well figure out what works well. And that, I think that's a great call out. Figure out what works well and work and, and roll with it. And try For too. sure. I think it's it goes into, you know, what kind do you like? Uh, I know myself. I, I've finally figured this out about myself. I probably lean on the side of hard to make. And so I do need a few of these products to kind of fill in the gaps in terms of maybe some depth of body that some folks that go as as that being their main criteria right off the bat uh, have that advantage over me. And so I've learned to use these in my feeding strategy. And as you kind of see uh, some of these other guys that maybe sit in a, a different breeds, I know that full tank is an absolute hit in the Angus breed and not going to go into great detail as to why that is, but they could probably use just a little bit of outward curvature in their rib cage uh, at this stage of the game in that breed. And so there's a lot of really uh, successful feeders that sit in that breed that like that product quite a bit. And just as much as you see maybe on the key and main side, uh, we see that uh, being used a bit more on to the fullest. And those guys, maybe as you look historically into the genetics of their breed and not to get way off into the weeds, but I think they could probably use just a little depth of body at times. And so just kind of the different types and kinds or what breed you feed, I think definitely uh, also helps as far as what su supplements you're going to choose. Yeah, I think that's really important. <clears throat> really important to call out too is you know understanding what you're trying to accomplish, and then knowing what you're starting with, and having a great relationship with either the person you're buying your animal from or the breeder themselves. I mean, because they're ultimately, hopefully, going to know the backstory and being able to help you understand what's what that animal needs. So, again, trying to get Jared on here. I know he's <laughs> mad he's never gonna <laughs> ever again, probably. Uh, but we're, we're we're trying hard, so uh, we can at least see him, and so that's that's is uh, that's positive. So, Jared, can you hear us? Oh, now he disappeared. He was up, and now he's gone. The empty chair is Jared's soul right now because yeah. I'm trying to do this. <clears throat> We got a question here. What shape differences should you expect between full tank and s'more fill? Uh, I think that what you can see with s'more fill, and we're not going to probably touch on that quite as hard here tonight, uh, is maybe a bit more as what you'd see in just like a rolled oats. And so what you've seen uh, as you historically use that in your particular diets, uh, I think that's going to be a pretty similar response in cattle uh, to where full tank is maybe a bit more uh, of an impact from just a body shape standpoint and a difference that it's that, that you can see a uh, s'more fill uh, as an added note they like to eat it and so if that's something that you're trying to get something to just go to eat and their feed better certainly something that you can add in there good question yeah we can All right, get him on here. Can you hear us, Jared? He's probably switching feed brands after this. <laughs> Never going to want to see or hear from Sunglow again. Again, on, on using these products in conjunction with one another, uh, full tank and to the fullest, if you'll just take a feed pan on show day and mix those two products together with one another, I think that there is no better option as far as getting the right kind of fill as you're prepping to go into the ring is those two products in conjunction with one another. All right, give us another sound check there, Not looking great. <laughs> the best part is, uh, for those watching, we tried this an hour ago and it worked fine. We tried it yesterday, tried to work through a little bit. Um, so this is this is make, makes it makes it tough. So all right, um, we're we're gonna skip.
body for now. Again, hopefully Jared's going to be able to, to get on here and join us. Uh, we're going to step into, into a, a kind of a different realm. We're going to roll into, into Man Up. Um, so Man Up is a, a product supplement that contains Optiflex um, with, with kind of some, some added goodies there for a little extra punch uh, for a higher plane of nutrition. And we talked about that with Explode on the pig side. That explode itself is not just a ractopamine product it's more than just that and that's kind of the same story uh with man up so nick i know this is a product that you like quite a bit and um kind of walk oh, yeah. through what what makes a great candidate i think also something to call out is what's different from man up to show cattle explosion what what are the differences what what makes um you know a good candidate for man up versus show cattle explosion so we can kind of talk about them almost in tandem a little bit uh, sure because we're gonna that explosion is going to be the one we're going to cover right after man up we might as well somewhat cover them together absolutely so uh just a little bit of a backstory on man up i think uh something to keep in mind is this is something that there is nothing else nothing else like in the marketplace as far as what it can do uh, in your market uh, show cattle and so uh, something that I think separates it as far as what you can find in this versus anything else is while it's tuning on their muscle and added more uh, just muscle shape in general, it's also laying down a hard fat. And so the biggest difference maker here is it has uh, what we found to be the most digestible uh, fat in any livestock in, in along with that uh, ractopamine. So that's, uh, yeah. I think, something to bring in. Uh, as far as what makes a big difference in this product versus some others. Uh, I think certainly uh, when we're feeding these show cattle uh, and what makes a difference. Can you hear than me? Show oh yeah, we got you now. Yeah, we, we can hear you. Uh -oh. There hot. we go. Now we're cooking. <laughs> Finally. What? We're 32 <laughs> minutes in. Perfect timing. <laughs> right on time. Right you on better. time. Yeah. Better late than never, they say. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we're kind of Jared, we're, we're walking through uh, man up and kind of what, what what makes that product really special. So Nick's kind of giving the rundown on it and then we'll get your thoughts on it, too. Yeah, like we were saying there, uh, I think something that separates it is it's uh, tuning on their muscle and then laying down a hard fat in the same time. And so as we found sometimes with show cattle explosion is you had to have those cattle fat. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth whenever we get to that particular supplement. Uh, but I think what allows you uh, an opportunity with uh, man up is that you can feed this earlier on in your feeding phase uh, if they're not even quite to that point where you would deem them finished. And so you're going to help yourself as far as laying down that fat and still giving you that optimal shape that I think we need to find uh, here in these market livestock, especially in that latter push of their life. Uh, something uh, that I think is neat with this is you can use it a bit earlier on as you're trying to just bulk up some younger cattle. Uh, and I think that certainly lends it to some added versatility versus some other products that you see, uh, not only in our lineup, but just uh, across uh, the board as we look at uh, feeding market livestock in general. Jared, how have you used this kind of in your operation? I know you, you feed all different kinds as far as shapes and sizes, and you have customers that kind of sit all over the board in terms of uh, levels and experience. Uh, how has this kind of helped you with those different scenarios? Um, you know, I, I do think this is a great product, uh, and it is one that we use heavily and, and promote to our customers to use and to have on hand. Um, you know, especially with today's times, you know, uh, keeping the cattle sound enough and built right, but but still having enough muscle is always a challenge. Uh, and so having a product like this that you can take those good built cattle that are super sound that maybe need just to pinch more tone or shape to their muscle. Uh, I mean, you can see it work. And, and those last, you know, 20, 30, 40 days, uh, depending on the severity of the case, um, it, it just turns that muscle uh, and, and makes a harder shape to it to, to, to see more shape and turn into it. So um, I, I think it's a great product, um, you know, depending on how bad um, or how, how much you feel like uh, you want to try to get out of that calf's muscle, how far out you start. Um, but but it, that last stretch there, um, you know, if, if you've got fat steers on feed and, and you've ever questioned uh, their muscle, uh, I just think it's a great product to have and to use. And, and that last stretch, it makes it, it's a game changer for sure. 
Yeah, one thing uh, that I think deserves to be talked about, and Jared can speak on this, but uh, I guess I'll touch on this real quick. He doesn't like people to know this, but he fed pigs for a while and had some success at it. Uh, but I think what's neat about this product is it works as far as its effectiveness and how fast it works, more like when you're feeding hogs. And so if we have some people that aren't on here or that are on here that don't know kind of how that works, it seems like when you're feeding hogs, you can change them just like that. And that's something that I think is frustrating in cattle. It just takes so long to see a change to where with man up and especially when you're feeding these fat steers, you can see a change fast. Uh, I, I know Jared and I have talked about that. You feel that Jared and, and kind of how has that helped you, you know, kind of when you get to that old crap moment, it helps you move things in a, in a fast direction. Yeah, it does. And it probably, you know, um, like other products out there on the market that are maybe a little stronger, you have quite a bit of side effects. And that's probably one of the, the biggest advantages that I've seen to this product is, is you don't have structure issues. It doesn't tighten them up. Uh, it doesn't bring them up in their back like some of the stronger products. Um, so I like that in terms of being able to give you a little added shape and muscle, but, but still keep them soft enough and smooth enough and, and, and the most important moving right on their feet and legs. And so, um, you know, that, that last push is, is absolutely where it means the most. And, and just like you said, Nick, I mean, you know, everybody says, oh, you can't change cattle fast like you can change pigs. And, and that is true. Uh, uh -huh. But this is one of those products that, that will change them faster uh, than most any. Um, but still, like I said, not, not causing any severe damage or any repercussions uh, from using it. So, um, you know, the, some, some of the other products out there, like such as Zilmax, you know, uh, when that came out, it was so popular. And, and people weren't quite sure how to use it and and you get repercussions as far as structurally so um i, I we've we've been very confident in this product and, and like i said promote it to a lot of our customers to use it and, and um just if they have questioned their muscle on their calf or if we think it, it could be uh any better then we always have this product on hand for sure yeah absolutely so Nick, d describe for people that, that have never maybe seen Man Up before or have never seen Show Cattle Explosion before, just the visual difference in those two products and, and how we go about feeding them. Absolutely. So uh, Man Up is a powder uh, and it's one that uh, to get off in, in just a bit deeper, it's almost like a, a bit more of a creamy powder. And it's probably something that's a little bit different than what we see in feeding cattle uh, as far as what they're used to to where uh, exp show cattle explosion would be a, a pellet. And so uh, I think this is what Nathan wanted me to get to. Uh, we do have listed on there uh, to feed man up uh, is something that we obviously want everybody to be able to do. There are a select few uh, that probably just don't love to eat it because it's a little bit different than what most cattle are used to or have ever eaten before. And so that's why we have that option in there. Uh, to drench them with it. And uh, I'm curious to know kind of Jared's uh, opinion on this. One thing that I've found uh, and what some of our customers I think have come back and, and really liked is when they go to that option of, uh, of drenching with Man Up, it seems like it makes it work even faster. Just the added hydration that it comes along with as you're putting that into their body, uh, it actually makes the product probably work even faster. And so although it can be a hassle at times, I think it actually benefits you as far as the rapid uh, response that you can get back out of that. What do you think on that, Jared? Yeah, I agree, Nick. And, um, you know, I, I think that's that's something that you have to consider when you're in that last stretch and, and um, you only have so many days until you're ready to go. And um, and so, you know, if you've got a calf, you're pushing hard and he's doing all he can to, to eat every bit of feed that you're giving him. Um, sometimes when you do top, top dress that and, and change it to, you know, it, it might cause them to back off just pinch right there when you're in the home stretch. And so uh, we found that drenching it, uh, you know exactly how much they're getting. You know they're getting every bit of it. Um, then they're, you're not asking them to, to eat something different on top of the feed that, that you've been giving them. Um, so, you know, we if you've got a steer that's just got an incredible appetite and will eat anything you give them, uh, we certainly want to try to uh, see if they want to eat it. Uh, mm -hmm. But if they back off the slightest bit or, or if they're just a little bit of a picky eater, we don't even think twice. We just go to straight drench. And um, it is a little more trouble, um, you know, mixing it up and drenching it down. I mean, you got to be careful uh, how you use that drench gun, of course. But, um, you know, in terms of knowing you're getting all that product down them um, and, and feeling comfortable that, that you're going to be able to uh, hopefully change them, uh, I, I think, you know, that's the way it works the best for us. 
Yeah. And, and for some of these new families that are jumping on here and looking for some additional information, I know that uh, bringing the word drench into it can maybe be a little bit scary. And what I would stress to everybody that uh, is listening to this right now is the worst thing that could happen is you're going to have to go change your clothes after it gets done just because they want to spit it back out. The, the biggest thing with drenching is they have to make the choice to swallow. And so you're not hurting your calf by any means. It's not inhumane whatsoever. It's no different than them taking a drink out of a bucket of water. The only thing is it's a little bit messy for you at times. And so don't be worried about that. Uh, if you need any help with that process or you just want some pointers, again, you can call us a few times. But uh, like I said, the only thing that's a downside is it can be a little messy if they don't like it, uh, but you're not hurting anything. Uh, and I think that's something that needs to be touched on because there's some misconceived notions when you're talking about dren drenching some stuff. Yeah, yeah and I, I think – go ahead, Nathan. Go for it, Jared. I, I was just going to say, you know, as long as you're easy with that drench gun and you're not trying to slam it down their throat, that, uh, you know, they're, they're going to take it fine and, and might spit a little on you. But, um, you know, if it's a calf that needs it and you take your time, we, we usually don't have much trouble. Yeah. Yeah, and – and for some families that, that aren't accustomed to doing that, talk about the difference, Nick, that the show cattle explosion then offers. Absolutely. So so back on uh, show cattle explosion, which is what I always describe to people as the father of manna. And it's kind of where it's derived from. Uh, and that's a pelleted product. And we've never had any issues with anything eating that. And so if, if you're a little bit tweaked out, uh, by man up and you don't want to deal with the drenching again I would I would urge you to try it first because there still is plenty of them that will eat it and I think that you'll get a faster response and maybe a bit more what you're looking for out of man up if maybe you don't have them to that uh, optimal cover yet uh, but if you're not comfortable with that just feed show cattle explosion and, and you're going to have very similar response uh, just maybe it's going to not have that added hard fat laid down with it uh, show cattle explosion is something that it's worked for a million years for us. It's been kind of our, our tried and true. And it's something that I think, especially if you get to that last 42 days uh, is what it says on, on the bucket. And you feel like your calf has enough fat cover and you just need more punch. There is nothing else like it. You just add it in there and it will do it for you. It is the most simple to use product ever. Uh, and I think that, uh, we can all kind of get to that point where we want them killer looking and we're striving to get that body shape right. We get them fed to the point where we have enough cover, but then we think, oh gosh, these still are market livestock and I just don't have quite enough go in terms of muscle shape and dimension. This is the product that you need, no doubt in my mind. Yeah, thanks. I, I, I just wanted to clarify there, you know, some of the differences between the two because you know, at the end of the day, they're both products that contain Optiflex, right, which is the active ingredient uh, with, with yep. Ractopamine as the active ingredient. So if you're going to have, you know, improved average daily gain, you're going to have some some improved uh, muscle quality and, and deposition. So, again, th those are two incredible options. I don't know if there's another feed company out there that has two options for you um, to, to use Optiflex in a safe manner that, that you feel comfortable with. So... I, I think it was important to just kind of call those call those two out. Um, okay, so we, we, we saved kind of what, what we thought would hopefully be the best for last, and we're glad that Jared was able to jump on here. We, we want to talk about full body, and I know that uh, that full body at, at Lucky Strike and, and for Jared has been an unbelievable product for him. And so, Nick, if you want to kind of tee up a little bit as to what full body is, and then we'll let Jared kind of talk about the success that he's had with that product. Yeah, sure. So uh, full body kind of in its essence is a, a bit of a transition feed. And uh, it's something that we found here in, in the show ring is something that works incredible just in terms of keeping some added bloom in terms of their overall just appearance. And it helps, uh, I think, uh, where to the fullest is more depth of body, full tank is more outward turn to the rib cage. I think full body is the all encompassing, just more body shape. And I think that's something that we can always use. Uh, it's something that is as safe as anything out there in the market. We actually use it in our creep feeders all the way until the absolute last day that we have them on feed. And so it's something that I think is awesome from that regard. Uh, it does have some added corn cob in there. And so I think what separates it from others in the marketplace is uh, 
it actually kind of slows down digestion and again just helps with that expansion right there through their center body uh, and it's something that we found works like nothing else in the marketplace uh, and it's uh, as versatile as anything that we have in our portfolio i know uh, jared has kind of used that that's his cinderella when it comes to feeding uh, his charlotte heifers that beat on everybody uh, and so <laughs> curious to know kind of his uh, take on it uh, and he used his it in some different scenarios, but specifically when you're feeding those show heifers, kind of when you bring them in as calves and then through, you know, that last show, you're always trying to win. How do you use this uh, in those different strategies? Um, you know, that, this is a product that, that we absolutely always have on hand. Um, and, um, you know, we've we've used it uh, on, on heifer calves, on steer calves, on big breads. Uh, we, we've used it in a variety of ways. Um, you know, it, it, there, there's no question um, that, that swoop to that body and that lower rib uh, is just so crucial to have uh, in the show ring with those heifers. Um, you know, when it when it comes down to uh, to those finals decisions, those guys are making it, it just having that extra sweat stretch and and swoop to that body. Uh, there's no question it, it, it is helpful. So um, this product is, in my opinion, uh, the very best on the market. Uh, to get that added stretch and swell to them. Um, you know, we, we've even tried it on um, calves that we get coming in. A lot of people um, use some other products as starter pellets to, to swell them up. And um, we, we go straight to full body. Uh, you know, we start those calves out with our normal feed ration and, and adding full body into it. And, and you can tell it doesn't take very long. I mean, and it, it is a matter of a day or two and you can already tell how much those cattle are changing. Um, but in terms of, of those show heifers, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure there is a point, but I've yet to hear a guy say, boy, that one just got too much body for me. So, um, you know, it's pretty easy to, to cut the belly hair off if you feel like uh, you got too much. So um, it, it, it is the best in terms of swelling them, um, you know, right before the show, uh, night before the show, morning of, it doesn't matter. Uh, whenever your normal feeding regimen is, um, it, it, it fits right into it. The cattle love it. Um, you've actually changed that pellet and made it a little smaller, which I think the cattle do find it more desirable. Um, and so, um, in terms of it being a, you know, you get some supplements that, um, you, you think, well, this is really going to work on this one and, and you throw them a scoop and they sniff it and they turn their head. Uh, and that's probably one of the, the benefits that, that biggest benefits that we've seen to full body besides just the stretch and the swoop that you get, uh, is those cattle like to eat it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we've even had even had some heifers, you know, getting there, you're, you're in that final hour before you're going to start dressing and, and you're adding a little feed and trying to get that, that last little bit of fill and, uh, you know, throw, throw a scoop of that full body or two straight and, and those cattle just clean it up. So, um, but you know, we do uh, in terms of, um, not just the Charlays, but, but any breed, um, those cattle just seem to respond so well to it. Uh, and, and you see it, right there in that, you know, midsection back into that, that flank, uh, just that drop and swoop that you get, uh, in my opinion, it's unmatched. I mean, so we're done. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the mic, is that the mic drop moment right there? I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, that was, that was money right there, buddy. I'm we, about we, to move, I'm about to low on battery, so. Okay, we, we need to like, record everything you just said and drop that into a commercial somehow because that, that, that was awesome <laughs> that, that was awesome so yeah i mean it, it, it talked through us a little bit um or kind of explain to people what, what you think the difference is between our product and then some of the other similar products that are on the market um you know, um, the, one of the advantages, like I spoke about, was just getting the cattle to eat it. Um, a, a supplement's not going to work if the cattle won't eat it. Um, yeah. So having something that's palatable and that the cattle desire um, is is huge. And you know, we'll we'll have a few other products that we that we do add in with the full body and with the grain, um, and they'll they'll sniff and push just a little bit on on some of those. Uh, but you can you can almost always be sure they're going to eat the full body. Uh, and so comparing it to other products, um, that, that is definitely one way that I've, I've seen it, uh, seen it, you know, outperform the other products. Um, and, and just, you know, it, it's always, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that you're just going to absolutely completely change one's body shape with it. Uh, you know, they do have to have uh, some of those right pieces to start out with, but getting that extra stretch um, while keeping them eating. Um, you know, one thing I like about it, some of those other products, when you really pour the fillers to them to, to try to get them extra full that day, you know, it gets them a loose stool. Um, and I, on a white one, I can tell you that is not <laughs> ideal. Uh, so a little bit tough to keep clean. But um, so, you know, they don't seem to get as loose. Their, their bowel stays a little uh, firmer. Um, so that that is another definite advantage. Um, so um, Jared's crew always looks just, like he's running a daycare at uh, these Charlotte shows. He's got these baby wipes just coming out everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm. for sure. You got to. You got to find the tricks to keep them white ones from getting messy. That's for sure. So, um, but, but yeah, just, and, and really it's just the obvious that, that is the big difference. And that's just that swell. Um, you know, that, that extra, extra stretch and swoop that you get. Um, it, it's just when you feed it, you can tell that you fed it, you know, and some of these supplements, um, whether they're hair or for structure or for, for body or for muscle or whatever they might be for, um, you know, some of them you go, man, I don't really know if it's working, but I think it is. So I'm going to keep feeding it. Uh, or, you know, vice versa. I I don't really see any difference and it's expensive. So I'm going to quit. Um, and notice a a difference and and it's obvious. Uh, and so, you know, there, there is, uh, you know, very important but just just the obvious you know look at the cow now and now it can change them uh you know and in the 20 hour period but more when them cattle have been on for you know weeks even the time and, and that that there um that that's that's where it keeps them back uh is well, you can go at all other possible. Starting to lose a little audio quality there, but um, I think incredible, just wise words of Jared's there on on, on the success that, that they've had with those products. I mean, um, again, I, I would highly encourage you guys, once this is done and once we hit – you know, over, it's going to record and you can jump back on here and check that thing out. And again, it's going to be on our Sunglow uh, YouTube channel and you'll be able to see that starting tomorrow once we get it uploaded. So we've got about 10 minutes uh, left here. And so if you've got some questions, please let us know. I I do see you've got a a good question here from Rebecca that I'm going to pull up into the screen. So on show day, will you feed, uh, feed as well or only full tank and to the fullest? which I think is a great question. You know, are you going to feed your grain, your normal supplement, or, you know, your normal complete feed alongside these supplements, or are you just going straight supplement, Nick? Uh, so I think that brings up an interesting conversation, and you'll get some different answers out of people. So uh, my personal take on this is after the morning feeding on show day, all rules go out the window. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but, like, once you get to that morning feeding – and you've remained uh, constant in terms of just their routine up to that point, you know that they're going to have to show before their next feeding. And if this is one of your target shows, your goal is to do as good as possible in the ring there that afternoon. And so I think that any and all rules go out the window. Uh, I have those giant feeders that hang on a fence, and so you can put so much feed in there, it's probably not even funny. And I'll put whatever in there that they would like to eat. And so – I think that uh, my personal go-to is the conjunction of full tank and to the fullest because I think that's where you're going to get the most response in terms of depth of body as well as outward curvature to the rib cage. Uh, and so I think that's where I like to start. Uh, but inevitably, they're going to want something different after a while. And so we will mix in uh, guys. just – Yeah, you're back. We will mix in uh, just right. whatever grain we have with us. Uh, and, and I've even gotten to the point where I've walked around and grabbed some of my neighbor's feed, his complete feed, and it, and it just kind of is whatever they like to eat. Again, uh, get to that morning feeding on show day and make sure that they stay in their routine to that point. 
after that, you're just trying to win the show. So that's my personal take on it. Jared, what's, yeah. your, what's your kind of protocol? We had a question here. Do you feed actual feed on show day when you're trying to get some fill or is it more just those filler products? Yeah, um, I, I just, right, right, we had some technical difficulties and we got fired back up here and I caught the tail end of what you were saying as far as maybe going around and borrowing a scoop or two and trying to get them to eat whatever they will eat. But um, yeah, we, we keep their ration the same as what we normally would. And just like you said, you're going to feed through that show day morning uh, just as you would in any normal time. Um, and then when you are within that hour or two stretch there before you're going to start you know, dressing the calf and, and preparing to go to the ring. Um, it is getting them to eat. If, if they need that extra full uh, fill, it's getting them to eat what, what they will eat. And so if it's a, if it's a random scoop of feed or a random uh, scoop of filler, um, then, um, then we are trying to get them to consume whatever they will. But, but with the, with the full body product um, and, and even the two of the fullest, um, those are two products that, you know, if they're kind of looking around, you go throw them a handful of that and they'll usually, uh, get back at it but we do we do keep the grain in their ration uh and just to keep some normalcy in what they're eating uh and and get them to consume as much of that as they will and, and then you know play with it a little from there in your time yeah absolutely great, yeah great answers great answers rebecca great question thank you for asking that again we we've got we've got some time here um you know, it's only 730 out, out west, you know, so you guys are just, you know, just starting to slow down a little bit. So um, if you've got questions, please ask. I mean, these, these guys are a wealth of knowledge and there's don't think that um, any question is is too novice. Um, we, we've all we've all had to start somewhere. We've all had to get some questions um, answered by by somebody that we trust. And, you know, these are these are guys that have that have been there. They, they've had success I mean, they know what they're doing. So we're going to probably go another 15 minutes. Um, so that way we can make sure that we get everybody covered. So, so please do ask questions on here, guys. I know uh, uh, one scenario that we probably didn't dive into yet, Jared, that I think people would really like to know more about is when you're kind of just hanging out and those cattle are, are not really getting pushed for a show, you're kind of in that in-between window. Uh, what products, uh, I know you and I have talked about before, I think that's where full body is still highly useful. Uh, what products are you kind of using in that stretch when you're not just pushing on them? You know, that's a great question. I, I do think that depends a lot upon, you know, the type of calf, um, you know, especially on, on the heifer side of things. On the steer side, most of the time you're always thinking about your gain and where you need to be and having a target weight in mind. And, and so there's not, you know, as much downtime with those, with the heifers, you know, it's so important to keep uh, those females fresh and, and leaned up uh, in between uh, when you're trying to get them ready. So, um, you know, when we're in between a, a season here, you know, like for instance, OYE uh, brought the cattle home and um, we'll, we'll actually kick them out on a round bell, supplement them with just a little bit of feed where they, they get some, some minerals and, and some nutrients and just a little protein. But, um, you know, we, we don't feed a lot um, of extras during that, that time. Uh, we want to try to peel some of that condition that we put on those females off. Uh, and, and get them lean back up where we do have that room to go ahead and, and start back and, and go back to pushing on them and, and uh, getting them, uh, you know, swelled up and, and prepared like we feel best. So, um, you know, it, it's, it is depending on the type of heifer. Some cattle put the condition on, you know, much quicker than the others and lose it much quicker than the others. But um, so, um, you know, and, and I think that's one thing with full body, you know, paying attention to, your ration and far as uh, on the heifer side, more importantly, just paying attention to your fat levels and your content as far as when you add these supplements, um, making sure that your grain that you're given with some of these supplements isn't too hot. Um, because if you've got a hot grain and, and you throw a, a supplement in there with a little bit of energy, um, you might be pushing a little more fat towards those cattle than, than what you even um, expect. So um, that, that would be one thing is just when you when you are tuning on them and, and trying to decide where their condition needs to be, just paying attention to to how much fat you do have in those rations with with all your products. Awesome. I know so a good chunk of this conversation has been a bit more on heifers, and sorry to, to steal the microphone again, Nathan. But uh, 
you do make a, a living off of trying to sell show steers and, and tell us a little bit more about, you know, show day for steers, because there is uh, that looming weight that you have to keep in mind versus on these heifers that you're kind of just whatever looks the best. And so when you're filling on those steers, uh, kind of how does that process look in, in conjunction with some of these products and filling on them to make sure they look right, but you're keeping uh, in check the weight that you need to be. For sure. Um, you know, that's, that is um, something like to the fullest um, that you won't have, you know, you'll, you'll have a little more uh, filler than, than you will actual weight. Um, and, and that's a product we'll use to get them uh, to, to munch on that and get them to swell a little bit with not, you know, uh, jeopardizing where you're at weight wise. Um, the full body, it, it's another product too that we'll use um, because you're going to get some stretch with less product. Um, and so, you know, you can give them a scoop or two of full body and the visual appearance will be, you gave them four or five scoops of grain. So, um, it, it's, it's definitely, you know, we, we probably would represent the full body product as a, as a heifer product because we use it so much in that regard, but we, we have plenty of steers that we feed it to. Um, we don't ever go to a show without a bag, even if they're not on it, uh, get to the show and they back off the slightest bit and you, you give them a a scoop or two of it and, and get that feel back that you feel like you've lost uh, while being there at the show. So uh, in, in those terms, um, you know, that, that product just, it, if even on the steer side, you know, if, if you've got to just maximize a little more rib rib shape just to balance everything together, um, it, it's, it's not a heifer only product by any means. It, it, there's plenty of steers out there that could, that can use it and benefit from it. Uh, and so that, that show day, uh, supplementing some of that in there and, and maybe even the day before um, to, to maintain your way back weight. Uh, it, it's key. Awesome. That's great info. So real quick, we've got, we've got a clarifying question from Rebecca. Um, so the full tank and full body are kind of the same, but maybe a little different in terms of the area that they're filling them out. So Nick, go ahead. I the same but different. <laughs> I just like that, the way she phrased that. They're the same but different, which is very true. If you're just reading about these products, it, it can get confusing. And uh, I completely understand that. And I, I answer phone calls about this frequently. And so if you have some questions, again, feel free to reach out. And, and that's part of what we're here for is just to help you kind of decipher some of this stuff because it can get confusing. But full tank and full body, uh, in essence, uh, you're trying to achieve similar responses, but they work just a little bit differently. So like we talked about there earlier, full tank is more of a beet pulp product. And I think it works uh, specifically in terms of outward curvature to the rib cage and upper turn to the rib cage uh, to where full body, as I said there, uh, I think it's about as all inclusive in terms of depth of body and outward turn as you can get. So that's kind of the middle ground in my opinion. To where to the fullest would be more just kind of straight up depth. Uh, and so that's the way that I've always described it to people. Full body, again, is something that I think you can use in nearly every scenario. Uh, full tank is something that you're probably going to wait to use until you get them in the show barn. To where full body, I think you can get baby calves on it all the way up to, uh, again, the very last day that you're showing. And it's maybe uh, as versatile as anything that we find. Full tank, I think uh, the ways that it works in terms of upper rib cage fill is very impressive and in a, a show scenario, I think is is something that certainly works awfully good. I, I hope that answers your question. I know that uh, we're talking consistently about body shape. Uh, they all do something just a little bit different. And they're totally different ingredients, right? I mean, full tank Absolutely. and full body, you know, from a formulation standpoint are incredible. They're, they're not even remotely close. Uh, in terms of the way they're formulated, which because full body does not contain any beet pulp, uh, you know, there's no there's no pulp um, in that product at all. It's more of a grain filler. So, um, yeah, fun fact: full body can actually be a, used as a sole ration. You can feed only full body, and you'd be perfectly fine. So that is something that does separate it uh, from some of these others. That would be what I would deem supplements uh full body we use as a supplement but it can be used as uh just your straight up ration if you're kind of in a holding period yeah poor jared now he's fighting the sun i just 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 can't win i mean i'm struggling i'm struggling 
uh, we're just glad you we're just glad you were able to get on here at all. So I think uh, what, absolutely, and I and I, don't, I didn't get a chance to say, but I do want to tell you guys uh, how much I appreciate you having me come on, and and uh, I think this is is awesome what you're doing and and trying to spread the word and and um, help the public and and you know talking about no such thing as a dumb question and and that's a hundred percent the truth because. I can I can admit that I learned something different, you know, whether it's every day or every show or or every cap different that we feed. Um, every one of them is different. And so you can't just set, you know, this is exactly how I'm going to feed my calves when I go home and start right. this year. You know, so every calf is different. And that's why these supplements, um, you know, not not every one of them uh, needs to go to every calf and different ones respond differently. So, um, you know, it's it's great to to try to share some of this knowledge with, with the public. And, um, you know, it, it, you get to a point where, um, you're, you're looking for something, the next great product and, and, you know, um, full body is the one we use the most and, and that we've had the most success with, but, um, you know, it's just whatever, whatever product that, um, suits your animal the best that you feel like will benefit their appearance the best. Uh, is the one that you need to use and then getting some tips on how to use it best and, and when and how to use it. Um, it, it. You always need to ask questions. And, and um, Nick, I'm, I'm sure you're much like me. You'll see something that you hadn't seen before that you saw work and you might go, hey, man, how, how'd you do that? Or what would you guys do? And um, there's always more to learn, always questions to be asked. So I, I think that's that's one thing, you, you know, you're never you're never going to know it all. You're never too smart. So uh, always be willing to to ask a question or, or to try to take in some kind of new knowledge uh, in terms of, of, you know, being more competitive or, or trying to, uh, to excel what you're doing. So. Absolutely. Once, once, once you quit learning and once you quit asking questions, you need to find a new hobby because there's, there's no point in continuing to do this. Cause this is, this is what, what we do when we show livestock. It's not like there's a, a race or a, a finish line at the end that we're all trying to cross, right? We're all trying to create, an ideal that doesn't even exist. So, you know, for, for us, we're, we're all trying to chase something and to figure out how to do it and try to do it at a high level, it can be tough. And so I think it's really important that, that we create an atmosphere in the show world that people feel comfortable that they can ask questions. So you're not going to get anywhere without asking. So please, please feel free to ask. And even if, um, you know, you, you don't feel comfortable asking on the chat, don't, don't feel like you can't reach out to us. Uh, Again, my name is Nate today. I've been with Sunglow for two years as a marketing specialist. You know, Nick's been with Sunglow a long time, fed cattle at a very high level for a long time. And of course, Jared with Lucky Strike. I mean, those guys are, are dominating here. So again, we're, we're happy to help. We're happy to, to make you know, your dreams become reality. And if that dream is to do better at the county fair, do better at jackpots or do better at, at a national level, you know, we can make that happen. So um, we, we're about to run out of time here. So if you've got any last minute questions, please stick them in the comments. We're going to jump off here in a couple minutes. So, um, I, I think one thing that's, that's really important that, that, that we need to cover is, um, just the importance of understanding that, that not every supplement is made for every animal, right? So don't, I, I don't think three of us hope that you take from this. I need to go buy every supplement that Sunglow has for all of those into my animal. Don't, don't, don't do that because you're not, you're, you'll never want to do it again and you'll be upset and you'll be frustrated and you won't understand why they're not working. So I guess it kind of walks through if you're a person that's starting out and you're just kind of understanding and kind of experimenting with supplements, where would you start and what would you kind of start with and then move on from there? Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, oh, you said, did you say my name or him? Either Jared, one. you take it. I'm Here. curious to know your answer on this as well. Okay. Um, you know, if, if you're inexperienced and um, you don't necessarily know what you're looking for, um, because, you know, we, we have a lot of families. Uh, we, we sell more steers to the to the families and, and um, kind of been fighting the heifer deal with my son. And, and so on the steer side with these families, you know, they'll come to you and they'll be like, hey, we, we want a good calf and we want to be competitive. But I'm just going to be honest with you. We don't know what we're looking for. Uh, and, and there's don't feel don't feel, uh, you know, left out or feel stupid if, if that's if you fit in that category, because we all started at that point at some time. So, uh, you know, the best advice I would give you is if, if take your calf to a show, listen to the judge's reasons. Um, you know, if if 
he says, hey, this calf's, you know, made really good, but we got to get more muscle in him, that, that's a chance to maybe look into the man up or the explosion products. And if he says, boy, this one's, uh, you know, made awesome, I just want to see more depth of body and we got to drop him down in that flank and, and balance him up better. Well, that's when you look into, you know, the full tank or the to the fullest uh, or the full body. So uh, I think paying attention, even if you don't know what your calf's supposed to look like, uh, paying attention to what the judges say. And, and, and now take that into consideration, too, as far as don't go home and change something every time you go to a different show, because uh, every judge is going to probably uh, potentially have their own opinion and, and they're going to say different things. But, um, you know, if if you go to that show and your, your calf stands third because uh, they weren't full enough, then that's a perfect time to go home and try some of these products and, and use whichever ones you feel like are, are going to be, uh, you know, advantageous to the problems that your calf has. So, um, you know, that, that, that'd be my biggest advice is, is listen to what people have to say uh, within reason and, um, you know, try to try to find a product that will fit your calf and, and fix the faults that, that you can find uh, or, or that can possibly be fixed. I agree. I think that that also lends itself to uh, a point of make sure you're surrounding yourself with people that you trust. And uh, I think that something that we found in the midst of uh, COVID-19, which is the reason that we're having this Facebook Live, is just what this community of showing livestock is for us. And, and there's people uh, that I trust and I call on for questions, too. I work for SunGlow and I call and ask Jared questions about how to feed some of our products. I mean, that's just part of it. And you find those people that you trust and you think are successful and do it the right way. And those are people that you ask questions and you take that into consideration. The second part of that is please give these products time to work. And my wife is sitting on the other side of my house, house right now, listening to this live and laughing at me because I wish that cattle fed like hogs and that they changed as fast as hogs do, like I touched on earlier. And I'm terrible in terms of patience, but I put a rule in my barn that I have to give it at least 10 days before I can change it again. And I do think that's something that we all need to think about, especially in the cattle ring, is these things aren't magic and they don't work overnight. And so please give it a little bit of time to do what it's supposed to before you go back and change it again. Like Jared said, don't go uh, to a show every weekend, one month and change something every time, because truthfully, the product that you started that first weekend isn't even really working to its fullest until probably that third weekend of that month. Just something to take into consideration. I think it's something we all can get impatient when we're showing livestock and we want to do good right now. And sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a great call out. I mean, again, if, if COVID has taught us nothing, uh, it's it's maybe to be patient, <laughs> and so 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 hopefully that we we can all kind of take some of the lessons that that we're we're learning or have learned over the last seventy days or so and, and kind of translate that into the livestock world. So um, I know that 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 can be tough because I'm, you know, we feed pigs and I, I I get frustrated when I'm not seeing something in like three days. So I I, I can understand how how frustrating it can be on the cattle side too. So. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, we're about to hit uh, quarter till, and I, I appreciate um, everybody jumping on here. I appreciate Jared battling through, showing his resiliency, and joining us on here. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll know where what spot he needs to sit in the yard next time to make make it work perfect. So if uh, if you are a Sunglow customer, we appreciate your business very much, and, and if you aren't, uh, we hope to earn it. And we appreciate you jumping on here, taking the time to learn. Um, so on behalf of Nick and Jared, thank you so much for joining us again. If, if you want to go back and watch this, this is going to be archived and you'll be able to get back on there and check it out basically as soon as I hit end, and then tomorrow it'll be um, uploaded onto our Sunglow Feeds YouTube channel. If you've not checked out it, we've got tons of other videos on all of our other products. So uh, we appreciate you joining us and stay safe and wash your hands. Thanks guys. Appreciate thank you. It.